We sold the house! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, after a long week of moving out of our house for all the showings we had, we finally accepted an offer. So, we want to show you guys the new house, but we can't show you all of it yet, so we're going to give you a little sneak peek. Let's go check it out. All right, here it is, new house. <laughs> That's all you get for now. So we're going to show you the rest of the house once we close on it. We're hoping in another month or so. Uh, but for now, that's all you get, sorry. <laughs> Today's video is a little bit different than our normal video on this channel. Uh, but we really feel like it's the secret sauce to um, the different ways we've been successful in life. And we feel like um, creativity is just a really important skill to develop and grow. So I think a lot of people have careers that maybe aren't typically creative, so they think that they're not creative. But I think that you can for sure hack your brain and develop that skill. So Jamie's a great example that he went to college to be a high school science teacher, and he was for a while, um, which would maybe be a typical career that you wouldn't consider creative. So in this video, we wanna share a few tips with you guys that if you feel like you're not creative, you can learn how. So first, we just wanted to talk about the different ways that creativity has impacted our life and actually made us a lot of money. The first thing we wanted to talk about is actually our real estate investing and how that's been creative. We've actually made hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, by real estate investing creatively. So mm -hmm. um, this house is a great example. Um, when we bought it, we had the dream to open up all the walls. We didn't know if it was possible, but it was kind of just like a vision we had. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sarah's design skills you know, made it all nice and decorated cute. We just were able to really totally transform this place. So when we had all of our showings this week, we had several people tell us that this was their dream home. And our home is definitely very nice. It's beautiful. We put in some high-end finishes. We used our creativity to make it beautiful. But if you guys have ever seen our house before, it's definitely not that special technically. It's a ranch. Um, it's a pretty basic home, it's but... Like, it's like basically a white box that we yeah. decorated cute. <laughs> well, we put like high-end finishes no, yeah. in and stuff, but yeah. my point is, is like a lot of these people saying that they want this house as their dream home, they probably already live in a house that's very similar to this, but they just didn't have the creativity yet to like open it and like design it like we did. Mm -hmm. But I believe that they could. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's interesting that people see our house and say, wow, that's my dream home. But in my mind, I'm like, well, you probably live in a ranch and you could probably do something similar. I know it takes money for sure, but like, I think people are more capable than they give themselves credit mm -hmm. for. So this is our third house we've lived in since we've been married. Um, but every two to three years, what we've done is we buy a fixer upper, we fix it up over that two year period. Uh, to our taste, to our design. We don't do it as like a flip. We do it to how we actually like mm -hmm. it. Um, and then we turn around and sell it. Um, and this is our third time doing it. I think we're up over, you know, $300,000 we've made tax-free um, by doing this just um, in our spare time and, and, we, and we enjoy it. So Why is it tax-free, tell them. We're gonna go over numbers more in a different video, but tax free. I don't wanna get any hate comments yes. below. Because we live here, that's why it's tax free for over two years, at least in Michigan. Yes, in Michigan, if you're yeah. owner occupied, you don't have to pay capital gains taxes when you sell your home. But that's not what this video is about, so yes. let's move on. Yes. Another way creativity has made us money is through our furniture flipping. Uh, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know we did a lot of furniture flipping. <laughs> but furniture flipping is something where you need to kind of see the potential in an old raggedy piece of furniture before you buy it and then you have to market it uh, and make it look its best. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that involved us uh, ripping skirts off chairs mm -hmm. or doing some cane or painting, stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. So it takes like a vision. Another way we have made a lot of money from creativity is through our wedding photography business. That is what Jamie and I did full time for nine years or so. Mm -hmm. And that obviously is a very creative field on its own, but we still had to like be extra creative to like stand out among the crowd because mm -hmm. there's a million other photographers out there. Um, and so we tried to do unique stuff with, not only with our actual like taking of the photos, like our actual photography, we tried to be unique, but even just with our business model and how we were reaching people and what we were showing them. I think there was a lot of creativity in the behind the scenes business side of our weddings mm -hmm. that people maybe don't realize. Um, that helped us be really successful. Yeah, absolutely. Starting a successful business does take a lot of creativity. Totally. Um, you think of people like uh, Elon Musk, he's not just like an engineer or like a businessman. He is creative mm -hmm. in his ideas and his concepts. That's what has made 
uh, what he is up to. So, you know, earth shattering, earth changing, you know. So, yeah, for sure. Um, someone like that is also creative, not just uh, using their skills. Now that we've talked about the different ways we've made money with our creative brains, we're going to teach you how you can be creative as well. Tip number one to hack your creative brain is to always be learning new things. So by learning new skills, it helps you think of things in a different way. So you're training your brain to like think outside of what you normally are thinking. With furniture flipping, we taught ourselves to look past what you see. In a thrift store, you might see a dirty old chair, but if you lift up the legs and there's mid-century legs underneath, like I trained my brain to see that instead of seeing what was actually in front of me, which was a dirty old chair. Mm -hmm. So another example is when we did wedding photography, um, whenever I wasn't shooting, I was constantly like looking around at my surroundings for like um, cool locations to take photos. And then when I would find something really inspiring, I would think about like, okay, how could I make a shot like that unique and like, um, and in photography, you get low, you get high with your angles, like you kind of change it up. So I think just by learning different skills that maybe is outside of what you normally would do, it just really helps your brain develop a new sense of wonder in sorts that you kind of just like, you look at the world in a different way, mm -hmm. um, which helps you be creative. As Sarah said, like that whole skill learned through furniture flipping, just recognizing the beauty in like a tattered old piece <laughs> of furniture. Uh, you could take that same skill and apply it to house flipping too. Mm -hmm. Like you may walk through a gross, disgusting house, but if you've kind of learned that skill of, you know, appreciating what something could be, totally, you may see a diamond in the rough that no one else can see. Yeah, I mean, even like, I know a lot of people have hobbies like, I tried to learn embroidery a couple years ago, you know, and even though that might not make me any money or like do anything specific for me, it's like I'm using my brain in a different way, you mm -hmm. know? And so I think like that's the key here is like, don't do something, just don't learn a new skill because you're like, oh, this is gonna make me money or I start a business, mm -hmm. but just learn a new skill for the sake of it. And I think like it just, it wires your brain a different way. Absolutely. So tip number two is to draw inspiration from others. So this might be a little controversial, y'all, but controversial. Controversial. Okay. What I mean by that is like, it's okay to copy things, especially when you're first getting started. There's really not much out there that is completely a brand new idea. For instance, when we made our mural wall for our um, furniture flipping, we did like this like art deco rainbow colorful thing. And we've seen so many people copy it on TikTok. And like, that's okay. Like, um, if that helps them get started and then maybe they're going to start seeing art in a different way or maybe their brain is going to start working in a different way that mm -hmm. the next time they create something it's going to be more their own idea yeah. you know so i think it's okay to like draw inspiration from others or even just to copy if you really feel like you're not creative and you need to do something mm -hmm. um like that it's, it's a way to develop that skill yeah. like from number one you're developing a new skill by copying someone else so totally um like we the, with the caning of the furniture we got that from someone named angela rose yeah um, so we saw it online um lone fox did like the the furniture painting first so like those were just yeah. ideas we got from other people yeah and we can kind of make them our own for sure mm -hmm. and you should do the same but like it's okay to copy especially if you're trying to learn how to be creative. Tip number three is to eliminate distraction. It's really hard for you to think up new ideas and think in a different way. If you have your phone out in front of you, um, yes, you can draw inspiration from other people's pictures and stuff, but you, you're not gonna really ever come up with your own ideas mm -hmm. or think creatively by looking at your phone. So uh, that is, I say phone a lot because that's my biggest distraction. So what I found is one of the biggest things that's helpful for me is to actually get out in nature. Um, so kind of like Sarah said, when we were in doing our photography business, when we get out in nature, we would get inspired and we'd be looking for different photo spots and stuff like that. So yeah. just being away from all that distraction, you know, the stuff in your house, um, it really can start to have you think new thoughts and different thoughts that you maybe haven't thought before. <laughs> new thoughts that you haven't thought before. Yes. <laughs> I love it. We've got one bonus tip for you. <laughs> Sarah is very passionate about this. So I'm going to let her share. What? Yeah. What are you talking Oh, Sarah always talks about it. how people are too scared to try stuff. It's true. So don't be afraid to fail. I think that people don't like taking risks and it frustrates me because risks just pay off so big. I'm not going to, I'm not going to yell at you guys, but like, just don't be afraid to fail. Just try something, even just starting small, you know, and just don't be afraid to fail. Cause worst, worst case you fail and who cares? You start over, you do something else. You learn through failure. True. Someone once said that. 
I'm a citizen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we hope uh, that those tips were helpful. Uh, they've definitely made a big difference and changed our life completely. So mm -hmm. um, if they helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if they didn't help you, give us a thumbs down. Oh, sad. Even though we can't see those anymore. YouTube took them away. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for our next video where we're going to creatively transform Sarah's cousin's living room into Ooh. a beautiful boho space. Ooh, okay. So, All right. Stay tuned for that. Bye, See guys. See you guys next time. Bye.